Hello and a big welcome to Materialise Your Ideas with the new Enscape 3.1. We are very excited about what we have to share with you today as we'll be talking about the newest features that are now available with the latest version of Enscape. In terms of what you can expect today, let's take a look at the agenda. Um, so first up, we will have a short message and introduction to the 3.1 features from VP of the Product Visualisation Group, Peter Mitev. Then we will get to hear from one of our 3D visual artists on the making of the 3.1 model before we get the chance to see the newest features in action. We'll introduce you to the new Enscape Material Library and the Overhaul Material Editor, the simplified assets which have been added to the Enscape Asset Library, and we'll also take a look at a heavily requested feature, the Panorama Gallery, before talking about an improvement to shadows and our support for NVIDIA DLSS. And before we get started, I just wanted to mention that if you have a question today that you would like to ask the team, please use the GoToWebinar question pane and we'll get back to you after the webinar, if not before. So let's dive right in and get started. We'll jump into our first item on the agenda and learn more about Enscape 3.1 with the VP of our product visualization group, Peter Meter. Hi everyone, and welcome to the Enscape 3.1 release webinar. We have a lot of exciting new things to share with you regarding our latest and greatest version, but before we get into that, I just wanna take a quick moment and thank all of you in our community for your continued support, your continued questions, and, and everything else that you guys do to help us make this a better product and a better platform for the design community at large. When we look at our previous release in 3.0, I think it's also really important to recognize that it was one of our best and, and biggest releases to date, and, and by a large margin as well. And that's largely thanks to exactly that type of contribution that our community is, is so helpful with, with the questions, with the suggestions, with the feedback, um, and really with, with everything else. So we really wanna encourage everybody to continue being engaged and continue supporting us in the way that you have. And it will really allow us to just continue improving and, and giving you guys uh, the best experience version after version. So without further ado, I want to just do a quick introduction to the features of 3.1. And I really just wanna highlight some of my favorites because uh, afterwards the application engineers are gonna take over and do a much deeper dive um, and do some hands-on demos with some of these features and more uh, in a lot more detail. So first off, we have our Enscape Material Library. And this is exciting because it's the first time we're offering a library of, of low-level assets. I think most of you that are existing customers know that we've had an asset library for quite a while, and that asset library was and is populated with uh, complete 3D models. But this is really the first time that we've, we've started to offer just the material piece as, as a standalone thing. And it's because we recognize that the material creation process is really one of the uh, most time-consuming parts of the visualization process. And, and honestly, one of the trickier ones to get right, especially if you're a beginner. Uh, there's a lot of technical specificity there that's uh, kind of difficult to master sometimes, especially right off the bat. And, and hey, I'll speak from experience here. Uh, it was quite tough for me the first time I had to learn what an uh, albedo was a uh, long, long time ago. But um, it's something that we hope we can make a quicker and easier process for everybody. So we're starting the library with around 240 materials and you can use these right off the shelf if you want or you can use them as a starting point to create something different uh, or, or more robust or more specific to, to the image that you're trying to create. But this is something that we're gonna continue developing over time. This is by no means the end. We wanna build a really, really robust library and allow everybody to have that choice of selection and customization going forward. Next up, we have one of our most requested features, which is the Panorama Gallery. And we absolutely love our standalones, uh, both web and desktop, and, and I know that the community does as well. But we've also heard the feedback that we want to be able to curate the story a little bit more and to craft the experience um, specifically to, to our goals and, and where we are with the design process. And we hope that this Panorama Gallery can really help us get there. And this is kind of what we have for our, our first version. It really allows you to take these different panoramas, put them together, order them in a very specific way, and share them with people uh, that you know may not have a VR headset or they may not have a very powerful uh, laptop or, or desktop with a great graphics card. So it's a really accessible way uh, to share a, a experience or, or even a walkthrough 
um, with internal teams, external teams, clients, and, and really everybody in between. Next up, we've got our race trace shadows. And really, I just kind of think the image on the right says it all. Um, but as we continue to interrogate our designs and our tools more and more um, as, as our buildings and our projects get more complex, this question of, of, of representation of reality becomes more and more critical. And, and it's also something that we've heard and we continue to hear. So this is just one example of how we can start breaking in that extra level of believability, of, of reliability when making a design decision. This is uh, admittedly pretty, pretty performance intensive uh, to, to do a ray tracing at this quality, especially if you've got something uh, that's quite intricate like a ficus or, or you know, a leaf or a tree. Um, but nevertheless, it's, it's something that we, we think can, can be leveraged even today. And it's something that we think will only get easier and easier going forward, especially as we continue to work with some of our, our hardware and software partners in, in making this more and more efficient and accessible. Which is a great segue into the last of my really favorite features, which is we've added support for NVIDIA's deep learning super sampling. And if you don't know what this is, I, I highly, highly encourage you to uh, check this out after this webinar. And Kai is going to talk a little bit more about it as well. But um, it's essentially a AI technology that upsamples a low resolution image to a much higher resolution. And for those of you that have done that same thing in Photoshop or in PowerPoint, you know that normally it gets blurry, right? But that's where the AI comes in and that's where NVIDIA's expertise in software and hardware really starts to shine because this model upscales that image with very minimal, borderline no loss in fidelity. Um, and this is just one example of, of some of those tools and techniques uh, that I was mentioning previously that we can offer to boost performance, boost quality, and, and really allow things like ray trace shadows or, or other kind of um, edge case fidelity options to, to really be accessed by as many people as, as possible. So uh, we look forward to, to rolling out that support and we look forward to our community being able to test this um, available on RTX cards today. And we really, really look forward to, to your feedback there. So without further ado, I want to hand it over to the rest of the team here. Uh, we've got some exciting demos, we've got some exciting interviews and, and question sessions. So um, I really, really hope you enjoy what we've uh, prepared for you. We've certainly enjoyed preparing it and, and building the product. So um, really, really looking forward to uh, the reception of the community. Thanks, everyone. Wonderful, thank you, Peter. Now, in a moment, we're going to have the chance to watch a short interview with the 3D artist who created the model that we're using to showcase 3.1. And um, you'll see this project in literally every place imaginable, our website, on our blog, on our social channels. Um, but before we jump into that interview, let's check out the new release video where you can see the model that our very own 3D artist, Samir Majovi, created.
hear from the person behind the model you just saw in that video, Samir Mujovi. This is Samir Mujovi, 3D artist at Enscape. For this webinar, we asked him a few questions about his work on the Enscape 3.1 showcase project. Yeah. Well, my name is Samir. Uh, I'm an architect and I've been focused on architectural visualization for the past seven years. So my main task in the company is actually uh, working in almost the same way as our users would and by doing that I'm providing content for marketing purposes. Something like uh, sample projects that our users can download, creating um, textual animations for videos, rendering and also sometimes modeling assets and since 3.1 we are creating materials. How did you come up with the design and the visuals for this release? Well, in, in real world, an architect will have actually a client, will have an exact location of where the building will be built, will have the rules that apply for that location. And all of those things uh, somehow influence the design of the building. And in our case, we have a blank page, so what, what should we do? And we thought like, okay, our new features in the next release will actually be our client. And the goal is, present them in the best way possible. So for example, for this 3.1 release, um, our main feature, our hero feature was actually the material library. And uh, we wanted to, pre to present a big variety of them. Um, and that was actually the goal. And uh, why we came actually to this building is like, okay, what building can, in what building can we show a lot, a lot variety of the materials? And we were thinking, okay, this could be a multi-purpose building that's located in, inside of it city and in that way we can uh, host a lot of different exterior and interior materials into that project. After we decided on that it was like okay now it's time to get inspired how the building should look like and for those things we use a lot of references, reference images, look at them and trying to get it, get us inspired and somehow like create an image in our, our head how that could look like. And that, I would say, it, it is the most challenging part and that, that's where Enscape comes in because you, you, you have really quickly to decide what and how to do it. And by using Enscape, you can very, in the early stages, you can already see how it looks, what should be changed and actually make all of those decisions in real time. What were the challenges you faced along the way? Uh, after the project was created, it was time to actually prepare images and videos for the final presentation. And two, two things are most important here, uh, composition and lighting. Uh, and it's a great thing in Enscape actually that you can walk through the project and, and just like a real photographer, search for the perfect shot, search for the perfect video. And uh, that makes the job a, a lot easier and a lot more, a lot more fun. Uh, as uh, for but knowing what to search is actually good to have a basics in architectural photography in architectural video making because you would know what to do as for the lighting the main trick is actually controlling the exposure manually and then trying to find a perfect balance between sunlight HDRI artificial light and play with those values and playing with them it can get you a really uh, really interesting results also, it's really important here to have a reference images to know where are you going because you can test almost infinitely because it's so fun to do it. What is the advantage of being able to work with materials early on? Applying materials in an early stage of design could uh, influence the lighting of the scene drastically. So darker materials would, make, uh, would absorb more light, lighter materials would reflect more light and all of those things actually influence influence the lighting of the scene. So it's very important to do that in an early stage also and not just using the white mode. And also that, that, that helps architects actually testing out should we go with a lighter floor, should we go with a darker floor, how should we combine with the ceiling, how should we combine with, the, with walls. And all of those things you can see in real time in landscape and make those decisions. How do you achieve your distinctive final look? Sometimes we also add a bit of post-production in our images as a final step. So the trick is actually to have uh, the images or the videos exported from Enscape a bit low contrast uh, so you can have a bit more freedom in uh, some image editing software. So you can like improve the contrast, add a bit of color correction, maybe some sharpness, but that's all actually that we do. 
Thank you, Zamir. Okay, now it's time to learn more about the new features as we jump into a few demos. Presenting to us today are our application engineers. I'm joined by Josh, Jeff, and Kai today. And uh, Josh is going to kick things off and talk us through the new material library and editor. So take it away, Josh. All right, thank you, Gemma. Let's get the screen share going. All right, well, thank you, Gemma. All right, hey, everybody. My name is Josh Rado. I'm one of the application engineers here at Enscape. I'm actually based out of Minnesota here over in the United States. And what we're going to talk about today is the new Enscape material library and the material editor overhaul. All right, so let's watch a quick video here. So like the, like the title of the webinar says, materialize your ideas with the new Enscape 3.1. In this release, we have introduced an all new material library. Setting up the, we all know setting up the right materials is an essential part in creating beautiful renderings. And now this just became a whole lot easier thanks to the brand new material library. This is the first iteration of this library. So this includes 244 pre-build materials varying from different woods, metals, bricks, tiles, and more. This is designed to help you improve the realism in your projects and save you time as you no longer have to invest in searching for that perfect material. As we can see in the highlight video and in this video, these are some of the different examples of what you can create with these new materials. All right, so let's jump over to our project here, which is available for download. So let's check this out. So over here is our Enscape material library sample project. So again, this is available for download, uh, enscape3d.com slash free sample projects. And what we can do here is we can, we can interactively, again, this is a, just a standalone file. So we can see these are all the individual materials that ship with Revit or ship with uh, Enscape now. So we can see what these materials look like at all the different times of the day by holding down shift and right mouse click to interactively scrub through the time of day. And again, this is set up for different um, different woods, different metals, again, all the different material maps that, again, ship with the new material library. So we can go down each row here. We have different aluminums. We have different types of plastics, uh, different types of car paints, um, even the different types of glass. Again, definitely check this out. So you guys get the ability to see firsthand what these materials are going to look like inside of Enscape. All righty, let's jump in and see what these materials look like inside of an actual project and how to get there. All right, so once you install Enscape 3.1, what you're gonna see here is this new icon. It looks like a material swatch. So if you click on that, what this is gonna do, this is gonna launch the material library. So again, we can see 244 new materials ready for us to use. So we have them broken up by different bricks, concrete, uh, pavement, plaster, et cetera, et cetera. So to get a material into the material, into our project, what we're gonna do is we're simply gonna click on one. And again, notice when I hover over one, a little star pops up up here. So what I can do is I can hit, I can favorite it. So now over in my categories, I can sit here and keep track of a couple of favorite ones that I like to use or that I use pretty often. So to get a material in, I'm gonna select it. I'm gonna hit this import selection. I'm gonna hit the drop down right there. If it imported selected, and if it imports successfully, it would hit, it'd be a green checkbox. Um, one thing to note is down here on the little gear icon, this is where you set the location of your materials to be imported to. So for users that are working on projects in a team or a shared project, you will want to set this location to that project's folder. So you'll be able to see, so everybody on your team will have access to the same textures. So that's a little helpful tip right there. So now let's add in a couple other ones. So let's add in the tile. Uh, let's take this one, I really like this one. So we'll hit import selection. And then we'll go to the miscellaneous tab here. Want to do a nice ceiling tile. And again, you can import multiple ones. So if I have one selected and then I want to do another one here, I'm going to select that one as well. Hit import selection. All right. So now that those are in my project, let's jump over and see what these will look like in Enscape. So we can see here, here they are in my project. So let's apply that tile. So if I double click and then I select that tile. I can simply just 
paint bucket it on there and look at this nice new tile material for us. Again, this is one of the ones that came with the material library. So it's already pre-set up. So it saves you a lot of time on having to fine tune the different reflection maps and the different uh, normal map settings. So again, these are all pre-set up and ready for you to freely use. All right, let's start adding a couple more in too. So let's, let's replace this ceiling tile here. So now what I can do is I can replace the ceiling tile. So that's what that one looks like right away. And again, if I need to see what a different one looks like, simply just click and replace that one. Or if I wanna see what, um, what these ones look like, so I can exit that one, I can replace the background right here so I can hit this plaster and boom. And again, if I scrub through the time of day, I can see what these all look like. All right, now what do these look like actually from a, from a material standpoint? So we can see here this plaster right here. So Enscape materials come with the albedo texture, a normal map texture, and normally a roughness map, but this one did not come with a roughness map. So what we can do here is we can see how all of these are broken out and we can even switch over to our tiles here. So again, this one did come with a roughness map here. So we can further fine tune these if we need to, or um, if we would like, we could save this out. So if I hit the three dots over here and hit export, I can export this material package and I can put this on our, our, our projects folder and I can start saving these, or I can fine tune these and then save them out. So if I need to adjust the tint color of this, I can do this as well. And then I can hit export and save that out, or I can go back to how it was. All right, so that is the material library from Enscape. Again, the new 3.1 material library ships with 244 new materials. You can access it via this Enscape material library button up here, or you can actually get to it from inside the material editor itself by hitting import textures from Enscape material library, and it will launch the material library. All right, now on to our material editor overhaul. So our material editor overhaul went through kind of a revamp in 3.1. So now what we can do is we can see a whole new look to it. Um, notice over here on the left-hand side, the these little circle icons right here, these are actually indications of what the albedo color is. Or notice how some of these have a different icon other than a circle. So these are actually going off the different type of material that it is. So we can see here the generic type, it's just a circle ball, carpet's got a carpet, et cetera, et cetera. Um, one other new thing is, is the self-illuminated type does have its own individual type now. So by enabling this or by changing this, we can see here right here, if I click on this LED one right here, now we have all the self-illumination properties all within inside the type itself. So again, this was something completely new to 3.1. And also we have the ability to click inside of, um, for different materials, the image will show up if you hover over it. Again, we, we further fine tune the sliders. And again, this is where you can export these materials. All right, so that is the revamped material editor overhaul. It's a lot easier way to get to um, visualizations through the material editor. And it's just a lot more streamlined and, and no. All right, now for our Revit users, this is something completely new. So let's jump over to Revit and check this out. So let's go back over here to Revit. All right, so for our Revit users, this is something completely new for us. So previously the Enscape material editor was for all the different design applications that Enscape supports, but Revit. But now with 3.1, we don't have to wait any longer. So the Enscape material editor actually lives inside of the Enscape tab again. So again, with 3.1, we have the material library button up here now. So if we launch this material editor, it is important to note that it is, in, it is taking all of the different materials that are preset up in Revit already. So again, we're not adding anything inside of the Enscape window. All these materials are coming from Revit itself. One thing to note is it has to be a generic type. The materials from Revit have to be a generic type for them to show up in the material editor. So what we can do is now we can enjoy a bi-directional link for 
between Revit's material editor and the Enscape material editor. So let's take a look at how this works. So if I click over here on my brick, I can go over here and figure out what material this is. So I can see this is a brick exterior. And if I look real quick, again, this was a material that came from the material library. So I just imported that into the materials library of my Revit project. And we can see I get my image, my roughness map, and my normal map. All right, so now what does this actually look like inside of the Enscape material editor? And what can I do with this? So if I go over to the Enscape material editor and I hit this brick exterior, again, it's taking the albedo, the height, and the reflection map from Revit. And now what I can do is I can further fine tune these. So let's go over here real quick. So previously, trying to get a displacement map was a little bit tricky. So now what I can do over here in the material editor is I can just hit this drop down and I can hit displacement map. And now we can see here, I can get a better visualization of what this material is gonna be looking like with the displacement map on it a lot faster. And again, I can adjust this as well. So if I need to set this to, if I only want it to be one, I can adjust this. Again, it's instantly updating here. And one other thing is since this is a, uh, we call it a bi-directional live link. If I change the tint color of this, say I want it to be like a dark, a darker brick red, since it's the tint color, I can go back to the end, back to the Revit material editor of that material. Let's slow it up quick. And then we will see the changes instantaneously over in our appearance tab now. So, and this goes for if I'm changing the scale as well. So if I'm changing the scale of my brick inside the Enscape material editor, we'll see the changes be instantly available inside of this material. So that is a little bit about the bi-directional link. Um, one thing to note is if we have custom surface patterns set up in our in our model, or if we have um, if we have them scheduling correctly, or we have some other really useful information inside of the identity tab, what we can do is we can hit this replace because all we really need to do is just replace the appearance of this image because that's all we want to do. We don't want to mess with anything else. So what we can do is we can replace it with any materials that we import from the Enscape material library. Or what we can do as well, like we did previously in SketchUp, we can go back to the Enscape material editor and I can go to this brick exterior and I can just simply import the material that I want to replace the appearance path of. So then I can hit import material package or if I need to fine tune one, I can export it. I can adjust it, then export it, and then re-import it. And it's simply just gonna override the appearance path or the appearance properties of that material. So it's not gonna mess with the surface patterns or anything like that. So that's how we would achieve that. So next up is a really, really powerful feature um, for video textures. Previously, we had to go and write a script inside the identity tab of the material. Now that just got a whole lot easier. If we go over and we find our we find our material right here. So to add a video texture, what we're going to do is simply just add that texture into the albedo slot of our of our material right here. So I'll just go navigate, find that find that video texture, and import that in, and our video will instantly start playing. And notice how I change this to a self illumination type here. So this way our model can uh, emit light from it. So now we can achieve a really nice look that we're going for. Again, a lot easier to do it now with the material editor. And again, since it's live linking, say I change this to 5,000 for the luminance value. Now I can go back over to our material and see the changes happen instantaneously. Let's go back over here, go to the appearance tab. And again, my luminance values changed. So again, this is a very, very powerful thing for Revit users now. And that is the material editor for Revit. All right, back to you, Gemma.
Brilliant. Thank you, Josh. Uh, let's jump into our next demo on the new Simplified Assets and Panorama Gallery, which Jeff will now take us through. Thank you, Jeff. All right. Well, thank you, Gemma. Appreciate it. Um, well, let's get started here. Um, my name is Jeff Melzer. I'm an applications engineer based here in Phoenix, Arizona. In this portion of the webinar, I'll be taking you through our new Simplified Assets. So, on the screen, you can see currently a video fly-through of the sample project that we created showcasing all of our new simplified assets. The need for simplified assets in a project are used for the early stages of design when you do not want your client to be distracted from the overall context of the project. Simplified assets also help you to not have to focus on creating detailed assets during the early stages of a project. These can be used as placeholders until it's time to add in the final details to a rendering. Finally, simplified assets allow you to keep file sizes down with the lower polygon counts. This makes sharing the project easier and faster. If you're new to Enscape, uh, we'll go ahead here and we'll take a look at how easy it is to place assets into, into a file. So you can see right here, I've got our asset library over here on the left-hand side in Revit. And on the right-hand side, I've got the Enscape window open. I'm gonna go ahead and click on our, our asset library. And as you can see, I'm gonna scroll down. We have over 60 brand new simplified assets to offer and our artists are always creating more. So we're gonna go ahead and just collect, or, uh, select this one right here. We're gonna to toss this guy into our Revit drawing as soon as it loads. Once it populates, we're gonna be able to just click it in here and then it'll show up instantaneously in the Enscape window. There we go. And so we're gonna click it right here. I'm gonna click escape twice. And now you can see it's going to instantaneously populate there in the Enscape window. Just that simple. So uh, with over 60 of these new low polygon count assets, finding the correct ones for the early stages of a project is incredibly easy. Be sure to have a look through our asset library to see what other assets our team is creating. And thanks for checking out this portion of the webinar. From here then, I get to showcase the next portion, which is our panorama gallery. So I'm gonna to need to close a window or two here for just a second, and then I can take you through this, uh, this demo. All right, so up next, currently on the screen, I've got Revit open on the left-hand side and Enscape again open on the right-hand side. In this file, you can see it's our new uh, project demo here for uh, 3.1. Our Panorama Gallery feature expands on the ability users have had to share Panorama files with clients through web links. If you're new to the Panorama option, it's as easy as taking a normal screenshot in the Enscape menu. We're just gonna come over here and simply click on the 360 area here. And then from there, we'll take the drop down menu and you can see there's the mono panorama. Now I've already created a, pan a few panorama images to save time. So from there, what you need to do is come back over here into, into your CAD software, and we're gonna click on the Manage Uploads. From there, you'll see all of the different projects that you have created throughout the time. And in this one here, we're working with the Building 3.1 project. I'm gonna click on the one file here that doesn't have the cloud. That means it's not already uploaded to the cloud. And in order to get, get it to the cloud, I'm gonna click on this button right here with the blue arrow. That's now going to upload this to our user account. And once it gets up there, we're gonna be able to do a few more things of editing. But just to quickly show you a few of the features that already existed prior to this, if you hover over the icon here, you'll see a QR code. This QR code allows you as a, as a designer or an, uh, to be able to share your project with your clients very easily by QR code. If you'd like to actually copy that, you come to the three dots here, you can copy that link. You can actually share that through a text message or email. You can also do the same with the QR codes or even save the QR code offline to be used to attach to drawings or plans so other people can see your panorama images. Once you've gotten this image up to the cloud, you'll see the little cloud feature there. And then after that, we're gonna go ahead here and we're gonna go to our web browser. In our web browser, you should be able to see a window that looks very similar to the one that I have uh, listed here on the slide. In, the sli in your web browser, you're gonna wanna go to http colon slash slash my dash staging enscape 3 dcom Once you get there, you're gonna be uh, greeted by a welcome screen that you'll need to log in. 
and make sure that you have all of your same user account information that you did when you had your login in Enscape. Now from there, you're gonna come up to the right hand corner here and if you are not seeing the uh, uploads window, just go ahead right there and click that. From there, you'll see all of the different projects again that you had created just like you did in your manage uploads button or window in uh, Revit. We're gonna go ahead and click on our buildings 3-1 update folder and you'll see all of the different thumbnails that are created here from that same uh, window previously. To create the gallery, we're gonna click the mono panorama gallery here, and we're gonna select each one of the thumbnails that we'd like to grab to edit. So we're gonna get all of these here, and then we're gonna go ahead and click the start editing button. Now this will take just a moment to load, but once it does, you'll be able to go ahead and navigate around these panoramas just as you always did. You can go ahead and click with the left mouse button, move around the scene, and go ahead and, and explore the different options in your panorama. If you're not happy with the order of your panoramas, say you want your client to be steered through this project a little differently, these six little dots here in the upper left-hand corner can be grabbed and then dragged to the left or right to change the order of the way that the panorama gallery is set. You can also delete a panorama image if you're not happy with it by clicking the X button here in the upper right hand corner. Or if you've missed a file, you could go to the plus sign here and add another uh, image from the thumbnails in. Once you've got your project set up the way you'd like it, you go right here to the save button, you click that, and we'll go ahead and title our new gallery. So we'll call it building gallery and I'm learning to spell. There we go. And then we're gonna go ahead and select it right here as to where we'd like to put that in, and we're gonna click Save. Now, once we go ahead and save that, we're gonna come back to the previous tab, and we're gonna click on that. Now, if it didn't auto-populate, which it does in mine, you could simply just hit the Refresh button here and it'll show up. As you can see, our new gallery has shown up in this list of, uh, list of stuff. And now we can go ahead and share this. To be able to share this, we just click the three dots off to the right and we open the sharing options. From the sharing options, you can copy the link so that way then you can send it out in your own emails or your own text messages to clients. Otherwise, you can actually uh, send an email directly from this page just by clicking in here and filling out the information. So, I hope this new feature really explains a lot to you. It's going to be great. It's an amazing way to be able to share new things to new people. And I'm really excited to be able to be the one that got to show it to you. So thank you very much for your time. And now we're going to go back to Gemma. Wonderful. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, so let's kick off our final demo where we will hear from Kai, who will talk to us about the new Ray Trace Sun Shadows and our support for NVIDIA DLSS, which can now be found in NC 3.1. So over to you, Kai. Thank you, Gemma. Um, and uh, yeah, this is Kai uh, speaking from Karlsruhe in Germany. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in today. Um, Today, during this part of the webinar, we are talking all about the dark side of your renderings, the shadows. With Enscape 3.1, we have introduced a new shadow generation mechanism, ray trace shadows. The term ray trace shadows essentially means that rather than taking the silhouette of an object and pretty much projecting it onto a texture map to generate a shadow as it's been done before, we're now actually sending out light rays from the sun and process them to look natural wherever light meets a surface and where it doesn't. For NVIDIA RTX capable graphics card users, this provides more variety in shadows for every rendering. This especially uh, visible when multiple shadows overlap. For example, from an object that's further away from the surface and one that's closer by or where a lot of small scale geometry interacts with each other. This process was very difficult to get right using the previous workflow where all shadows would be projected onto one image texture in the background. And now with physically correct shadow calculation, you can count on convincing quality from every perspective. The new ray trace shadows are exclusive to still image renderings, rest mode and panoramas, and also to daylight scenes. 
So you won't see any difference in videos or when lighting your scene artificially just yet. This, by the way, is also the reason why I'm showing you still image renderings and not a live video as usual. However, for sunlit still image renderings, if you're running on an RTX capable graphics card, you can enable ray traced shadows for any design application right in the general settings rendering tab. This is all it takes. It doesn't take noticeably longer, nor does it have any other downsides for you, but you receive a physically more accurate and detailed shadow behavior immediately. Let's have a look at some more examples. At first glance, it might look like nothing much is happening, but look at those details on these plants as they are casting shadows onto each other. And the clean detail we're getting on the pavement. Small, detailed objects and objects far away from the surface are what Enscape struggled with before. With this new method, you can get consistent and convincing shadows to contrast your designs. Look at these examples. What an improvement in quality. So download the latest release, Enscape 3.1, and make sure the ray trace shadows option is checked. And while we're at it, there's another even more impactful setting added in this dialog, the NVIDIA DLSS feature. DLSS stands for Deep Learning Super Sampling. This describes a technical achievement that enables your graphics card to render an image in a lower resolution and then, using a deep learning algorithm, enhance the result back to the initial resolution with practically the same quality as before, just a lot faster. In today's time of increasing demands in performance and quality of real-time visualizations and virtual reality, with models getting ever more complex and detailed, just as the expectations of your clients, this adds an impressive capacity boost for NVIDIA RTX graphics cards users. Again, there isn't much for you to do other than making sure you are running on RTX-ready hardware and making sure this checkbox is checked. Enscape will now render your real-time walkthrough experience in a lower resolution and then forward the results to NVIDIA's Tensor Core processors, designed specifically with AI and machine learning applications in mind. Using this new kind of power, you get results that are visually next to indistinguishable from before, but can provide results in a fraction of the time per frame. Let's check out the data. With the DLSS option enabled, the Enscape real-time experience is 30% faster on 1080p displays, an incredible up to six times faster on 8K displays. Videos are being rendered even faster than before, and even virtual reality benefits from this feature paving the way for latest generation high resolution VR headsets like the Oculus Quest 2 or HTC Vive Pro 2. All right, so I hope this has given you an appropriate insight into some of the amazing new features the Enscape 3.1 release offers. With this, I give it back to Gemma. Amazing, thank you Kai, and thanks to the rest of the application engineering team walking us through the new features. Um, so as you have heard today, with Enscape 3.1, users of all abilities can bring their designs closer to reality and improve various elements of their design workflow. Now you will be able to choose from over 200 ready-made materials to use within your models from the new material library and have the chance to edit them thanks to additional functionality in the overhaul material editor. You can also start to incorporate simplified assets into your initial designs to give clients and colleagues an idea of your vision without distracting them from the core elements of your design and tell a more cohesive story with the much requested panorama gallery. And as Kai just mentioned, uh, you will see far more detailed and realistic sun shadows and experience much improved performance and quality of your walkthroughs, videos and VR experiences thanks to our support of NVIDIA DLSS. So lots of great additions. Um, let us know what you think about the, the newest features and the questions pane. Uh, we'd love to hear your feedback. And be sure to keep an eye on our website for your chance to download a new sample project based on what you've seen today as well, which we will upload shortly. So to get started with Enscape 3.1, let me remind you that if you already have an Enscape license, you can visit our download page to get your hands on the latest version. The update is completely free. Um, and to anyone not yet using Enscape, you can try it out by signing up for a free trial via our website. 
And if we also have any students or educators with us today, be sure to visit our education webpage where you can request a free student or educator license. So plenty of ways to obtain Enscape. And we really hope that you enjoy incorporating the new features into your design workflow. And we look forward to seeing what you create.